Let's just get the live stream going. Hello, folks. Welcome to the first in one of our Wellness Week programs. This is Calligraphy 101. Um, hopefully, if you're with us today, you are able to pick up a calligraphy kit that has um, just printed worksheets as well as um, felt tip markers that you can use throughout the workshop. If you weren't able to, you can also print off the, the sheets and you can practice at home just using whatever you have. So uh, today, um, just before we be begin, I want to let everyone know that this this webinar is being live streamed to YouTube. Um, so if you'd like to not be on camera or anything like that, that's totally up to you. Um, the chat is not live streamed, but the actual video. So whatever is showing on screen will be uh, shared. So you all are welcome to participate and engage. Um, we encourage you to turn your mics on, um, engage with Sarah, ask questions as we go along. And we hope that you all get something out of this. Um, we do have our moderators, Shivam and Clarence, in the chat, and they'll also be interacting with you all today. If you have any questions or concerns, they're here to help. Um, last, accessibility-wise, we also have live transcripts in enabled. So if you'd like to turn on uh, captions, you can do so at the bottom of your screen. There should be a little button that says CC um, or something along those lines. And you can click that and you can enable captions or you can keep them off if you prefer not to see them on your screen. All right, and so with that, I am gonna pass it over to Sarah, a biotech student who's also super talented in calligraphy and she's gonna teach us some of the basics. Sarah, take it away. Okay, perfect. So hi everyone, I hope you're doing good. And uh, as she introduced me already, my name is Sarah. And I've, I've been doing calligraphy for like past two years. And I just thought, you know, maybe I should try doing a workshop or anything and see if this works. So I think we should get started. So I just have a, one question. Have you guys ever tried calligraphy? Any of them there? Or it's your first time? Yes, in uh, childhood days I have done a um, uh, couple of um, designs in calligraphy like uh, getting into some German and Gothic um, calligraphy, like using the traditional pens, which we used to have ink pens and uh, changing the nib and uh, according to the font size, which you want, um, we used to like, I used to do the different style of calligraphy, but completely I've uh, forgotten every <laughs> thing of it because it's been a long time. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. You can just start over from the scratch. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to switch my camera so we can see my desk. Give me a minute. And here we go. So basically, uh, in calligraphy, you have a couple of calligraphies, but Today, we are going to learn the brush calligraphy, basically. And so all these instructions, these might be daunting to you for now. So we're going to just run through them as we go further. So let's start off with the guidelines first. That's the most important thing. It's basically the section where you actually write. So the baseline and the waistline is where your letters sit. So like A, R, B, R, C. This is the main part where your letter sits. The A centers is where the upper loops come in. So as in for D, R, B, you can say. And the D centers 
is where your lower loops go. So as in for G, that's how it works. You don't really need to remember the terms, it's just how it works. So as in for the pen, we use two types of brush pens. In your kit, it's the small tip brush pens, but we also do have a large tip brush pens. The only difference between them is one has a lighter stroke on the other hand, other one has a thicker stroke. But if you're a beginner, I would perfectly suggest to use a smaller tip because the large tip is quite flexible. So it's very hard to manage. So you basically keep your pen at an angle of 45 degrees. So as in like this, so that you can write properly. Is anyone left-handed here? In the group? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, so we can just skip the left-handed part then. And we can actually get started with the basic strokes. So the first two are just simple down strokes and up strokes. Down strokes are basically the main part of the calligraphy is the pressure point. So when you do a stroke towards yourself, you have to apply pressure and it's going to give you a thick stroke. But when you go upwards or like away from yourself, you're going to go lightheaded. It's going to be thick words, thick, thin stroke, my bad. And this is how every letter is made. So you have to make sure about that when you go downwards, just keep it consistent and a thick stroke. And when you go upwards, keep it consistent and a thin stroke. So the first two strokes are basically that. So you just keep it down, pull it like that, and that's it. Same way here, and you can go like that. For the thin strokes, you just go lightheaded, handed, and you just drag upwards. This is basically how you do. Is everyone doing it along with me or they're just gonna view it and do it later so I can wait accordingly? Okay, so I can just wait a minute or two after each stroke. So we can just pull it down like that. And for this, you can just go a little lightheaded and go up. Now for the third stroke. The third stroke isn't really used in forming the letters. It's just a practice of shifting from thin to down stroke. So you start, start with a little thin stroke, then you press and apply pressure, then you start a thick stroke, and then you go again for a thin stroke. So it's like that. Just give you a hack of how actually you have to do along your calligraphy. So just go for a thin stroke, apply pressure, and then a thick stroke. This stroke especially can be a little tricky at first. So don't get afraid if you're not able to do it, but you'll get along. We can move on to the other stroke. 
this is known as the overturn. So you basically start with a thin stroke. You go upwards, take the turn, apply pressure, and then come downwards. Just make sure to apply pressure at the right time. Don't be like, if you start from here, it's going to look ugly. So just go up, halfway, apply pressure, come down. Let me know if I'm going any fast or any slow or if you need some time. So I can just wait accordingly. So you basically have the, a bigger overtone and a smaller overtone. It's just for this is used for capital letters and just for small letters. Yeah. Okay. Now we can go with the undertone. So you start with the pressure, go down, leave pressure, then go upwards. So if you keep your pen at an angle of 45 degrees Celsius, you'll be able to get this slanted in writing. On the other hand, if you don't keep it, you want to get something like this straight. So technically, this is how you write. But if you prefer this is more comfortable, this is how you want it. You can go for it. Can move on. Yeah, we can move on. Yeah. So the fourth stroke is basically a combination of the overtone and undertone. So you start with a thin line, you go upwards, apply pressure, go downwards, leave pressure, and then go upwards. I see a person just ended now. So you actually one more time, you go upwards. Apply pressure, go downwards, and just like that. Comparatively, for the thin, um, the undertone, the thin part is more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very pressure. Just uh, difficult to shift from the lower tone, uh, like thick stroke to down stroke. I've been there. <laughs> it just takes a lot of practice. Moving on, I feel this oval is the most difficult one. I couldn't get it right. So you start from here. Basically, you go O, apply pressure, O, release pressure, and then join it up, just like that. My pressure. Go on. 
it's same for the smaller one. So you start by pressure, release, and just complete the over. Now, this is known as the ascending loop, basically the B and the Ds. We use them in this. So we go like this, apply pressure and just download. That's all. Show again, like this. Apply pressure and downward. For next row, this is the descending loop. You start with pressure, release, and just like that. We can just do one recap, quick of all the strokes. So it's just apply pressure, pull it down. For the first stroke, with very light pressure, pull it up. For this, start with a light pressure. Apply pressure on again a thin stroke. For the overtone, light pressure, the tone, apply pressure downward. For undertone, apply pressure, release, thin stroke. For this, you just start with light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. For the oval, light pressure, thick pressure, light pressure, go upwards. For the ascending low, and for the descending low, go just like that, release pressure like that. 
Do you guys want me to repeat any of the strokes or anything is not clear? I can just do it now. Because before moving on, it's really important for you to understand each stroke. That's fine. So you guys are good with all strokes? Um, maybe can you do just a quick recap? I just joined like maybe a few minutes ago. Um, sure. Just so, quickly, right. Stuff. So firstly, you should hold your pen at a degree angle of 45 degree. When, you, when the line is drawn towards you, just apply pressure and pull it towards you. So it's gonna be a thick, thick stroke. But when you go away from you, apply light pressure. So it's gonna be a thin stroke. That's basically how each stroke is. So you apply pressure in this one. So it's gonna be a thick, light pressure. You start from a light pressure, then apply pressure and then release pressure. For this, you start with light pressure, then a thick stroke. For this, you a thick stroke and then a thin stroke. So that's the basic. You can just practice it, practice the basic strokes unless you just master it and then you should move on. Basically, each stroke is combined to form all the letters. For example, if we see an A, it's an oval. A down stroke and a little curve. Whenever you're practicing letters, just make sure you should always end your letters in midline, somewhere around this. Only then you will be able to connect the other letter with it. And after each stroke, make sure to lift your pen and then start with the next stroke. So as an A, this is your first stroke. Lift your pen. Start with the second stroke and complete it. And you have to do it throughout, like every time. I'm gonna make one more, just like an oval. Apply pressure, and like that. Just try to keep all your letters between the baseline and the baseline so it looks uniform and consistent. So what kind of pen do you use? Is there brands better than others or? So if you're just starting out, when I started out, I just went to a normal stationery shop and I brought the brush pens. This was the first brush pen I used. And it was basically a thick one because I didn't have a small tip brush pen. But if you're looking like for some perfect goods and anything, the current one which I'm using today is the Tombow brush pen. It's one of the best brush pens one can ever use for calligraphy. But if you're just starting out and if you're not sure you're gonna able to like it or not, you're gonna continue with it, just start with the basic brush pen. It doesn't really matter. Now we can move on with letter B. You start with a thin stroke like that. Then you make an ascending loop. Then you make a thin stroke again. It's basically a overtone. Then you release pressure and you make a small low, like that. So you start with a thin stroke, make an ascending low. You lift your pen. Oh, overtone. 
um, just like that. For the letter C, we can start with the thin stroke. We can leave it there. We can just go like that. This is basically an undertone with some modifications. Just let me know if you want me to remove or repeat any letter or any time. Just let me know. Well, let us see, you go like that. You make an undertone, and you go like that. For the letter D, you again start with a small O. Then you make an ascending low, just like that. Um, that's it. So an oval. E sending low. And just like that. Can we move on? Just give a like thumbs up or anything. Yeah, just just a minute more. Take your time, no problem. How, how do you make it so like the thin, the very thin part? Like, uh, what do you want to try to do? I just, I just try to just touch only the tip, like the tip, only that. Okay. It's just like, it's almost just touching the surface, nothing else, no pressure at all. We can move on. Yeah. Okay. So for the letter E, you start with a thin stroke. Basically, just make the stroke like that. And a little. Once again, you start with a light pressure. You go horizontal, you make a roof, and one underdog. Moving on to the next page. The F is a little tricky, but the basic breakdown can be it's an ascending loop or an a descending loop. So you start from midline, you start with an ascending loop, 
you go down and you continue with that making a b sending over and just like that You start with an E sending row. Continue with that. I like that. For the letter G, just make a loop over like that. Lift your pen, make the sending like that as it's continue to go the little curve. So an oval, lift your pen, descending low, and go like that. For H, you start with a thin stroke, A sending low, and then you make a compound curve. So thin stroke, thick stroke, and thin stroke and roha. People also do it like that. They make it an ascending low. And instead of starting from here, they start from here. It's up to you how you prefer. This edge is basically used when you, if you plan to do bouncy calligraphy, this edge is technically used in that, but I use it regularly as well. For the letter I, you start with a thick pressure, go upwards and leave it in the middle. G is simply a descending rule. With a dot.
can we move on? Yeah. Okay. Just let me know if you want me to repeat any of the strokes or any letter or anything. For letter K, it's basically three different strokes we do. So we start with an A sounding loop. We complete that. Then we make a horizontal like that. And then we complete it off like that. So we start with an A sounding loop. horizontal loop uh, like that. Or letter L. Use an A sending loop or a little modification. So just like that. We start in midway. And send the loop and finish it off like that. For the letter N, you start with the Take stroke, you lift your pen, you move one over to one, you finish it off, lift your pen, and do the same thing again. Down stroke. Over tone, over tone, and finish it off. For letter N, start with the thick stroke, one overtone, and just like that, finish it off. The letter O is ironically not as simple as the over.
so you start with an undertone. You go up, make a loop like that, apply a little pressure, and then finish, off, finish it off with a light pressure. I can make it a couple times if you don't understand. So down straw, go up, little pressure, light pressure, and finish it off. Hi, Sarah. Um, yeah. Just one quick question. Um, is it that uh, the speed is slow or is it like you are showing us in a slow speed uh, so that we understand or is it like we take time to draw the, uh, the thin edges and the thick edges? So I'm going very slow right now for you to understand. But when you see me write words, the calligraphy is basically drawn very slowly. Like, each stroke is drawn with time. Yeah. So, uh, if if you would having in normal speed, so how would have you like? Um, it will be a little faster regular... than this. Okay. When we start words, we can okay. you can see that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because the thing is, like, uh, I mean, when we go fast, it's completely ruined, and when we go slow, it's still better. So I was just uh, mm -hmm. judging what is the speed yeah. for the calligraphy each no. word. Like if you see it on like videos and anything, you see it pretty fast, but that is like speed up to four times. Just oh. imagine the speed then. Okay, okay. Yeah. So each alphabet, of, it takes time, right? It is a slow uh, uh, patience. Yeah. yeah. So moving on. For the letter P, you go downwards. Start with an overtone and finish it off like letter B. So downstroke. Over tone and finish it off. So you guys understand when I say like overtone or undertone, I you want me to use the light pressure and heavy pressure words. Light and heavy pressure would be better. Undertone and overtone, we know about it because you just, I mean, in the starting, you told us about it, but yeah. heavy pressure. Okay. <laughs> pressure <would be> <laughs> That's more manageable. Okay. So, we can start with the heavy pressure. Lift up. Light pressure. Heavy, then release and finish it off. For letter Q, light pressure, heavy, make an oval, lift up. Heavy pressure, you make something like the F down loop and then finish it off like that. So light pressure, go downwards. Over heavy pressure, low and finish it off.
for letter R, I find it like very difficult to fit it in baseline and waistline. So I just go a little up. So I start with a light pressure and make a small move here. Apply pressure, bring it down, release pressure, and finish it off. Once again, you go like that, small loop, apply pressure, release, and finish it off. You want me to do the R again? So a light pressure, low, heavy pressure, and light pressure. The letter S is a little tricky. Start with a light pressure, then with a heavy pressure, try to make a curve or a S like shape, and you finish it off. Light pressure, heavy pressure, make a curve like truck shape. And finish it off. For the letter T, start with the heavy pressure, go upwards, and just like that. For a letter U, you start like that. Heavy pressure, light pressure completed. Then do a down stroke and like that. Letter V is pretty easy. So heavy pressure, light pressure, and a small loop. For W, you can start with. Making a U kind of thing. Then a second U and finish off the loop. Our letter S is light pressure, heavy pressure, like that. 
and the same in opposite direction. That's it. For y, you start with an undertone and you finish with a descending loop. So, undertone. Descending loop. For the letter Z or Z, start with a horizontal line. With thin pressure, you apply pressure and then make a horizontal line again. So, like that horizontal line, pressure, end of this horizontal line. Before we move on to connecting letters, do you want me to repeat any of the letters with you? Any strokes or anything that you found difficult or you want me to repeat? Okay. So when you collect let connect letters for the word add, you make a normal A. So an oval like that. And you don't and you make sure to finish it at the midline. So somewhere around here. And then you start with your second letter. So the letter T. And you can make the assumption of the distance so they don't go very far away or very close. Just try to keep the distance between the letters consistent. So you make letter A. Finish it off. Midline, make your second letter, and that's it. For the next word, you make an E like that. Finish in midline, lift your pen, and then make the letter D. So 
for letter 9. To make the letter N. Finish a midline. Make the letter Y. For the letter F, you make I, finish your midline, lift your pen, make your X. For the last letter he, you make an ascending loop for edge, look your pen, do the second stroke, look your pen, and for E. So when you basically connect letters, so for example, if I make my E like that, and my D like that. So these two strokes, they just combine and be one. You don't make it separately. So there are many letter combos which are quite difficult, but these are some of them which I wanted to address. So for example, in the letter O and S, you basically start S from here, but when you start for O, S, you start it from midline. So you make O like that. And instead of starting from here, you start from there. And make your S. For the word WR, same way, you make your W instead of starting the R from here. You just continue from there, uh, just like that. This looks a little weird when you start off initially, but you'll just get along with it, with practice. For SR, make your S. And from there, you continue with the R. So in simple words for R, instead of starting from the bottom, you should start from the where you ended your first letter. This is an interesting combo because TH is basically used in every word. So you make your T, you make the, this long, small stick, and so instead of starting your R from here or connecting here, 
just continue making your loop, ascending loop from there. And this actually looks cool to me, rather than keeping it separate. The last, you make an O. You continue from there. And make an R. Oof, I finally come to words. Just give me some two minutes. Give us two minutes. Yeah, take your time. Can you move on? Sure. Thank you. No problem. So, we just keep connecting the words we used to do. So, edge. And one. Just try to keep the distance between each word consistent since you're lifting your pen after every stroke. A smile. So, I have a different S over here. If you want, you can do this or the one that you learn. So, like that. The end. I L N. Especially for N, just try to keep the distance between the two loops a little less. Otherwise, it's the only word that is visible in the whole word.
for the word love you can it's simply the same theory we are all we Starting with hello. Just like that. Moving on to life. So, is everyone with me? The rest of the words are just for your practice. It's basically the same thing. You can make each letter, lift your pen over after each stroke maintain the distance and everything. So there are different ways as you can write a letter for some letters. So I taught you as like this. But you can also write it like this. So you can start with a thin stroke. You can make a sound with a thin stroke, thick stroke, a small loop. This one's a little tough because in a small save you space, you have to do all the curves. So if you want, you can just continue with this. It's way much easier. And if you guys have done cursive, you might be knowing this is how we write the letter B in cursive. So you basically make a letter L for this word. You finish it off like that and then finish it with a small loop.
for letter R, he, he I taught you was a little roof over here. But if you can't really do that, you can just go up and instead of making a loop, you can just do like that. It will replicate the same idea. So you go up and just like that. So there are two ways you can write letter O. For the first one, you can start with a thin stroke. A little over. And you can make a horizontal line like that. For the second one, you start with an undertone. You make a big loop like that. So the way I thought it was like this. But sometimes this looks ugly because two thick strokes meet each other. So if you want, you can go with this one. Any questions? No, no, none for me. Okay. So that's all. I just added this in your worksheet, the lowercase and the uppercase letters. So your reference, you can practice them later. My application is open. You guys do have a upper place letter sheet in your worksheets, right? Mine seem to be the same. Hi, folks. Uh, you can always ask any question if you have. If there's any doubt, now is the best time to ask. Yeah, I think the uppercase is missing on my package. Too. If that's no, the I... we have lowercase, um, give it a shot. If it's missing, I can just email you guys uh, the only uppercase letter sheet for your reference. So you can just print it out and trace it later if you want. But for the uppercase also, it's basically the same rule for downstrokes, 
you make a apply pressure and make a thick one and for upper strokes you make it thin and light pressure and for the horizontal strokes as well like as in t as in a for capital you put a light pressure you don't make it thick Now, you guys can just go ahead and try it yourself. And let me know if you need any help or anything.
So do you guys have any questions, any queries, anything you want me to tell you, any stroke, anything? Has everyone completed here this page, the course page?
Hey, Sarah, thank you so much for sharing your talent with us. We enjoyed this workshop. How's everyone doing? Just trying some um, new words. <laughs> Rest, it was a great workshop by Sarah. Thank you so much, Sarah. And thank you so much, CCSI. Yeah, thank you so much, Centennial, for giving me an opportunity, especially. It was so awesome, Sarah. It's like, it was so relaxing. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Shivam, and uh, me and Mira Clarence, uh, we are uh, from engagement staff, CCSI. Um, it was so relaxing, right? Right, Clarence? And uh, like, I want to know about the participants. Uh, how did you like it? Did you all enjoy? It was great. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so shout out to Sarah for joining us uh, for the amazing calligraphy session. And uh, we all learned something, and it was so amazing. Uh, just yeah, a heads we just up. Just need more practice. <laughs> Indeed, it's very difficult to just learn in two hours. Yeah. It is just sum up of everything. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm also attending the calligraphy session for the first time in my life. <laughs> like I haven't done yeah. this, but. It, it was it so beautiful, right? Is it everyone's first time to attend a workshop for calligraphy? Is it everyone's first time? Because it's my first time too. <laughs> you can raise your hand if it, if it was your first time. <laughs> Technically, it was my first oh, time too, teaching a workshop. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so they've got a lot of first timers then. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Sarah, thank you so much for doing this with TCSAI and you know teaching the participants. Thank you so much. And uh, guys, thank you, yeah, thank you for yeah. attending the workshop. So we have a bunch of events coming up. Uh, make sure to visit our website. Uh, that is ccsai.ca uh, slash wellness. I, I guess we have the link in the chat, right, uh, Clarence? Yeah, yeah uh, you can all find the link in the chat and then click it and you'll yeah. see the so events for the wellness week. We've got Hip Hop 101 that is tomorrow at 3.40. And also we've got um, I'm Paint Night. I'm for the art one. There's an art workshop also, right? For some oh, yeah, painting, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, yeah there's I'm excited Paint for Night. that one. Oh, that's right. awesome, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, on October 22nd at 7 p.m right yeah so make sure you register yourself if you haven't done yet and uh, um, again it was a lovely session we all really enjoyed it if you have any questions doubts uh, you can always contact sarah uh, if you if you sarah if you want to provide your social media link you can always do that yeah i can just link down my instagram id all right that will be cool and it, Again, if you have any doubts regarding any upcoming events, how to register, register for them, or like if you are having some difficulty to um, get any link or a Zoom meeting, you're not able to join, you can always contact us too. Uh, me, myself, my name is Shivam, and uh, we have Clarence with us. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you can always uh, approach us for any kind of doubts. Thank you guys so much again. Thank you so yeah, much, everyone. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you.